Alhamdulillah May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Yesterday evening, I received a request from the head boy of the Islamic International School saying that the students of 10 standards require a session with me and they would like to ask some queries regarding career guidance. I told them, okay, fine, you can prepare your questions, what are queries you have regarding career guidance. And that's how we have the session of the 10th A and B, the girls and boys of the Islamic International School. So I hope you all have prepared your questions regarding career guidance. See to it that the questions are limited to career guidance only. Any other questions on Islam and comparative religion, anything else on Fiqh Masar can be asked later on. So this session is exclusively regarding career guidance, regarding a future, what you should do after passing school, maybe college, after passing IGCSC where you should spend your more time. So any information regarding that, we have to spend more time after finishing your school, college, or graduation. So the session is mainly based on that. Any boys have any questions? Yes, Muhammad Ali. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa My question is that uh, we have fields in after 10th, like science, commerce, and arts. So as you said that our main focus is on arts. So if someone who is intending to go ahead with science after attending the college, so he wishes to be attached to this, this thing which deals from cradle to the grave. So how, what is to be done with him? Like he wants to go out with doing medicine and he does not find that it, medicine is not done here. So what should be done with him? Like, Mudil asked the question that in the 11th and 12th, we'll have three major streams, arts, commerce, and science. And most of the graduation courses that we'll have connected with arts, but not 100%. Because if you want to do B.A. in science, and science is there. So it's not that science is not there. But if you want to do B.A. in science, you take a science stream and then join B.A. Because B.A. is in all three, arts, commerce, and science. Though arts, B.A. is more common. The arts, B.A. can teach many other subjects as compared to science. Science can only teach physics, chemistry, and biology, lower level only science. You can not even do maths, not that you cannot do. But the more common in B.A. is arts. But someone wants to do medicine. What option do we have? See, we have given five options. There are 1,000 options. So first, we are targeting on that which is more important. If Allah gives us the capacity, we will take care of all 1,000, inshallah. When will it happen? Whether in this life or the next generation, this century or next century, Allah knows best. The aim is there. So now, we have options which we feel is most important for our ummah. So first you target what is more important. So these five streams which we think is more important, we have taken care of that. If you want to become a doctor, then you pass your A-levels from here to a standard and join a medical college. But for joining that, you have to give the CT exam if it's in India. If it's abroad, you have to give those exams, the foreign entrance exam. So you have to give the CT exam and then you have to sacrifice. Sacrifice of the Islamic background. I don't know of any medical college that has the total Islamic background, etc. But there are medical college which a boy can yet remain on the straight path and take up medical profession. But then you can be a medical doctor and a part-time daya, as I said earlier. But if you are saying, I'll do medicine and be a full-time daya, don't waste your time. And I'll be like Dr. Zakir Naik. So then you have to go to St. Peter's School. Why you join IS? So if you have to be like Muhammad Salah, so you have to be born in Makkah. Fine. So you have to follow what Muhammad told you. So in Sunnah, 
what commandment he gives you is more important than the amal. If there are two things contradicting, the commandment of the Prophet and the amal of the Prophet, the commandment carries more weight than amal. Why commandment is given with full intention, knowing the situation. Amal, maybe there's some problem. So the Prophet said, don't stand and drink water. But there are these in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet shouldn't drink water. That means there may be some problem, but the commandment carries more weight. So my amal was that I went to St. Peter's. But my commandment is that IS is better. Fine, I'm not comparing myself to the Prophet, but if you want to be like me, if you want to follow my instructions. Similarly, I went to a medical college. But my commandment is you can go to a medical college, it's not bad, you can go to St. Peter's school, but better, closer is, if you want to be a Dai, medical college is not the best. So similarly, there are certain things, one is the commandment, one is the Amal. In the Amal also, there are many things which the Prophet does, it's called as Sunnah. The other is called as Mubah. Many things he did, he lived in the desert. So living in the desert is not Sunnah per se, it is Sunnah Lugvi. If you take it, Lugvi means language-wise. Sunnah means the way of the Prophet. That way Prophet stood and drank water. So Lugvi-wise, standing and drinking water is also Sunnah. But Fiki-wise, sitting and drinking is Sunnah. There are two types of Sunnah. One is Fiqh, one is language-wise. So standing and sitting both are Lugvi Sunnah. Because the student is drinking water. But if you want Fiki Sunnah, only sitting is Fiki Sunnah. The same way if you analyze, if you want to go, you can go. It's not bad, but if you want to say that, no, I want to do like Dr. Zakirna, he went to medical college, I'll go to medical college. So my commandment is the other. But yet you want to go, you can go, no problem. If you have so much of interest that, no, I only want to become a doctor, then you can go. Become a doctor is not haram. It's good. But see to it that if you become a doctor also, See to it, you get your patient closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You follow the rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that you get so much engrossed in your profession that you leave the Quran so now what you learned in this school. Hope that answers the question. Any girls have any question? They both welcome, sister. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum uh, assalam. Sir, so generally it is believed that if a person becomes a da'i or any Islamic field, he will not be able to earn a better living as compared to a doctor or any other profession. As you said, you do business as well. So is it possible that a person takes up full-time dawa and as well as runs a parallel business or something which can be equivalent to that a businessman or a doctor can earn? And if it's so, can you please guide us how to do it? Sister, that's a very good question. That is it possible that a person can be a full-time dai and parallel do a part-time business, like how I'm doing? and yet earn as much as a doctor or earn more, sister depends upon each one's ability. If I have to do full-time business, inshallah, inshallah, for me to earn a million dollar a month is easy. Million dollar means approximately four to five crore rupees a month. That is, I feel my capacity to do business. But I'm not here to earn money. What I do, I spend one day in a month on average. Not together, maybe one hour, two hours every week, or three hours a week. And then earning a crore rupees a year, more than a crore we are earning, mashallah. That means more than 10, 20 likes a month, mashallah. Allah has given that capacity to me. What I'm doing, I'm saying, if I do full time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my time for Allah is more important than my money. I have two options. What I do, I do 100% business, earn four crores a month and give it to Allah for the cause of Allah to spend. Or just spend one day a month earn 10, 20 likes a month in that day, fine, and give my balance time for Allah. So what I'm doing, I'm not taking any salary from the organization, I'm giving in charity. Now, everyone may not have that capacity. If someone has that capacity, it is the best. It is the best. But everyone may not have that capacity. Because people fail to realize that money is not the most important thing for life. Most of the people think money is the most important. And everyone thinks that RF is well because money is everything. And I just had an interview with Indian Express. But when I give an answer which doesn't go down their throat, they don't print it. They said, what's the budget of IRF? So I told him, why do you think money is important for success? No, no, but you know, you require. I said, fine. In top 10, it would be the last. If you have to think of 10 things important for a successful Islamic organization, money is required. It would be the 10th last. And I gave him the example. One Sadat Tumar, my love, please with him the second caliph of Islam, there were sahabas in a room, and then he asked, 
that what would you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill this room so that you could use it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one sahaba said that I would pray to Allah that may this room be filled up with gold so that I could spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the woman, my life with asked him, ask for something better. So the other sahaba said, I would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this room be filled up with rubies and diamonds and jewels so that we could spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Umar, my Allah, please with the mask, ask for something better. So the Sahaba said, Ya Amir al Mumineen, O leader of the Mumins, you tell us what is better. So Hazrat Umar, my Allah, please with him, said that I would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this room be filled up with dwarfs, with dyes, like Maaf ibn Jabal, Abdul Umar bin Auf, so that I could send them out to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See the difference. They were Sahabas. They were not wrong when they said that. I would like gold to be filled. They didn't say I want gold so that I would use it for my family. They said that ask Allah to fill with gold so that I would spend it in the way of Allah. So the niyah wasn't wrong. The other sahaba said diamonds and jewels. But the second caliph, what did he say? I would ask Allah to let this room be filled up with dwarfs and dyes like Maaz bin Jabal. So that I would send him outside or send them outside to spread the message of Allah. Money is not the main criteria for success. What did our prophet leave behind? Did our prophet leave behind wealth? He left behind Sabas. Today, we have 100 times more wealth, 1,000 times more wealth than what the Prophet left behind. Yes or no? We Muslims have the black gold or not? We have the oil or not? But look at the state of the Muslim today. What a Prophet leave behind? Did he leave behind oil? No. Oil came recently. He left behind Sahabas. These Sahabas, they spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. After Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him too. And the second caliph, they were so dedicated. It was the manpower. So manpower is more important than money. Money, you should never run after money. Money should run after you. So money is never the criteria. It is there. I'm not saying it is not there. But what we fail to realize is that we don't really analyze the seerah of the Prophet and of the Sahabas. Just for your knowledge, this IRF was started with a budget of 5,000 rupees a month. How much? 5,000 rupees a month. Many of you may be getting pocket money. I told my father, fine, you give lakhs of rupees outside. Give me at least 5,000 rupees a month. At least you know your son. Fine, he may make a mistake, but he will not cheat you. My father said, okay. Islamic organization, difficult to be successful. But he gave me 5,000 a month. That's how we started in 1991. With a small room of hardly 20, 25 square meters. You know what the ladies mean that we had earlier. Hardly 235 square feet, 20 meters, 25 meters. With that room we started. And now, Masha, in a span of 18, 19 years. I won't tell you what the budget is now. <laughs> we thought one employee ke one employee. You're asking 1,000 rupees. Oh, too much. He was the brother of my friend. No, we'll give him 600. So we had a meeting. We want to give him 600. He's asking for 1,000. So we had a meeting. Should we give him 1,000 a month or not? We had a big meeting, discussion was asked together. We want to give 600, we want 1,000. Then we said, okay, let's give him 1,000 rupees. So with that, with one employee, and with Allah's help, we started it. So it is mainly the manpower which is required, your dedication rather than money. But coming back to the question of the sister, that is it possible? Yes, it's possible. But one thing is there, it is not possible for everyone to do the same thing like the Prophet. Prophet is Prophet, direct Allah's help. Same thing as Hazrat Umar, what he did. Same thing as Abdurrahman bin Off. It was told, whatever he touches turned gold. And there's a view amongst many of the scholars. Whatever he touched gold means, whichever business he did, it was like he used to get money. So he was, mashallah, he got it, he spent the way of Allah. So everyone cannot be like him. So you cannot strive for that. But if the option is given, like in our organization, IRF, what we tell, that we don't tell a person that if your capacity to earn outside is 10,000 rupees, you come here for 5,000. If your capacity is 10,000, we'll give you 12,000. We'll give you 20% more. We'll give you 50% more. I don't want to tell him that, okay, for Allah's sake, you take half. It's not bad to do that. But then his parents will be my enemy. Yes, Akir Bada lecture, they gave a good lecture. Now my son is earning half. So I don't want to do that. What I'm telling, we'll give you 20% more for the same work you're doing outside. If you are doing some work which is not required, some doctor comes to me and says, see, I don't require a doctor here. 
so I can't match your salary. Someone says I'm doing business, I'm earning a lakh rupees, I can't give him because he's not going to do business here. But if he's a receptionist outside, if the person is a teacher outside, you come here, we'll give you 20% more. So at least you work with dedication. Many people don't come for money. All the people joining us don't join for money. But I'm telling you, even if you join for money, I have no problem with you. As long as you do it for Allah. That means, PJ, I left the job because 20% more, and now I'm doing Islamic work. Alhamdulillah, it's good. It's perfectly acceptable. You only come for Allah's mother say best. If you come for money and Allah both, no problem. Even you come only for money and follow the rules of Allah, that was no problem. But if you come for money or don't come for money and you break Allah's room, that is not acceptable. So what we have a policy in our organization, we tell the person, and I can give you several examples. We have doctor's example, who you may be knowing very well. We have example of engineers. What we told them, okay, what are you earning outside? Okay, 10,000, fine. Though he's a doctor, you're in 10 to 12,000? Okay, fine, I'll give you minimum 10. Keep a locum. At least you should get 12. Not knowing that whether he'll be worth 10 or not here. But the person gave for last month, I say. Now what he's getting is much more than what he can get outside. If he does full-time medicine, inshallah, we are giving double than what the person would get if he had been a doctor. He did not come for money. He came only for Allah's sake. I want to give, I want to come here, I was finished. But my thing, I don't want his family members to be against me. I said, okay, minimum what I'm getting there, you'll get here. And then as he kept on improving, we have got many engineers. What they can get outside, we are giving them more here. So if a person doesn't have the ability, Abdul Rahman bin Auf, may Allah be with him. If you can't, okay, I'll do. People have a problem. I don't want to work for money. I want to do dawah free. Many people have that misconception that Allah will come or free, which is very good, Alhamdulillah. I'm for it, and when I'm doing. Suppose, for example, you are doing a job, which is not haram. Working in a company like Tata's, halal company, no problem getting a salary of 20,000 rupees. And then you're saying, okay, fine, every day I'm giving two hours for dawa. See, I'm working, I'm earning money. And maybe that what you're doing in the month may be worth maybe 50 points for last month, let's say. Hypothetically. I would prefer that person joining an Islamic organization and getting 20,000 and doing 100 points for Allah. Because with what he's getting 20,000 salary, he's doing worth, worth 30,000 for Tata Company. The Tata Company won't keep you. Or he may be doing work worth 40,000. So unless the employer doesn't benefit, he won't keep you. If you get him worth 20,000 rupees profit, why will he give you 20? He has to make a profit from you. So he's guiding you with your guidance. You have worth 20, he's giving you 20, but with your ability and his guidance, he's getting 40,000. So from that 40, he's giving you 20. So you better work for an Islamic organization and get 20,000 rupees. Don't expect to get more. And you're doing work worth 100 points for Allah. So what happens, you're getting 20, they're getting 20 here. They are doing 50 points work for Allah, you're doing 100 points. So that person will get more sawab than a person who's working outside and doing two hours free. Do you understand? That means the net result is, fine, if he works here and demands 50,000, then he demands it. Well, outside your value is 20, why are you demanding 50? Niyat is wrong. But if someone gives 30 to him, no problem. Someone gives 50, he can work. But if he demands, knowing his outside value is 20, that means he's coming for money also, or only. If he's coming only for money, inshallah, he won't get sawab in the akhirah. But if he's coming for two in one, Maybe Allah will give both this world and the akhirah. So for a normal, a good die and a good Muslim or a good Muslimah, they should say my outside value is X. If they demand X, it is acceptable for the same type of work. But if they demand 2X or 3X or 1.5X, it is wrong. The person who is employing you, he gives you more, that is his prerogative. So many people may not have the ability, like Abdul Rahman bin Auf, may Allah be with him, or like the Sahaba at that time, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to do a part-time work, few may have. So if you try doing that, what will happen? Your ability to do 100 points of work for Allah, you are ending up doing 10 points of work for Allah. Many people come, Zakir bhai, hum volunteer karein. For that volunteer, I have to waste time explaining, and my time is important. I said, bhai, volunteer nahi chahi bhai. chahi bulayenge tumko. When we want volunteers, we may require for certain functions, like when we have the conference, you know, we have thousands of volunteers. 
But do you mean to say I'll keep a volunteer as a receptionist? One day somebody is coming, second day somebody is coming, third day, third is coming. Professionally, you can't work like that. At a low level, yes. We used to do that when we were small. When we had a 5,000 rupees budget, we had one worker and many volunteers. But to keep the volunteers with me, I used to spend time with them. Now my time is important. So what we realize that we can do together, but everyone may not have that ability. And one more thing, for a person who is doing part-time business and full-time die, the chances that he will sacrifice may not will happen. Are you get good money. Are you get good money. Then you will get good money. Are you get good money. So this love for money is very difficult for a person to subdue. So chances that he may deviate. Okay, now I've decided only one day in a month. And one day we'll do it again, what's going on? No problem. I'll do one more day and get two crores a year. Why one crore? Then three. As a beloved poet from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, that if Allah would give him one value of gold to a person, he would demand for the second. If Allah would give him second value of gold, he would demand for the third. How much does it require? It requires only a handful of dust. So what we realize that based on this, few people can avoid the temptation of money. Everyone cannot. So it's better to do a full-time job as a die, knowing that ability will be used by their organization. If you think, okay, my ability, no one can pay me. What ability I have got is not required for dawa. Then if he goes to an organization, see, I am expert in XYZ. I am expert in maybe some engineering, which no organization wants. But if I work in a company, whether it be Tata company, whether it be Lance company, whether it be Billa company, I will get about 50,000 rupees. Now, if I go in for organization, I may be worth 10,000. So then if he says, fine, I will continue my work. And then I will give one hour every day, or maybe one day a week, acceptable. Or he says, I do half day work, I get 25,000 rupees, this is acceptable. I always tell my staff that Allah knows best. No, we have, mashallah few hundred staff, whether on a low level, middle level, high level, you may never know that you may get more sawab than me. Just because I am working free, that does not mean I'll get more sawab than you. I cannot say that at all. I cannot say, okay, I'm working free, I'm working more time, I on average spend 18 hours a day, 7 to 18 hours. Counting the holidays and weekly off, if I divide it, it goes to more than 20 hours on average. The other staff gets a weekly off, plus two paid leave in a month, so they come 24 days. I spend about 20, 29 days in the office. So counting those four days, and if you divide it with the days I work, it will come to about more than 20 hours. You know, so I cannot say because I work more time than you, because I do it free, because I give money to the foundation, I'll get more sawab. Allah knows best. See, Allah has given me, therefore I'm doing free. You may never know that person who's a helper in the organization may get more sawab than me. Whether he's a helper, whether he's administration, whether he's a manager, Allah knows best, he knows based on the ability he has given each one. If that was the case, I would have relaxed. I cannot go, I travel so many hours, I spend so many hours, so my Jannah is secured. I cannot say that. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he put us in Jannah. That's the reason Allah will give sawab depending on your ability and depending on what facility Allah has given you. So I say that Allah has given me so many facilities that what I'm doing is less. That's the reason it makes me strive harder. That Allah has given me so much facility, whether with ability, whether with money, with whatever it is, that's the reason I'll be questionable more. So never is it that because I'm working free, I'll get more sawab. That depends upon Allah. If Allah has given me directly, that's Allah's grace. Haza bin fazl rabbi this is because of the fazl, because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't deserve it. So with this intention, if you take a profession or take a job, not thinking that I want to work free or should I get. So based on this, your ability, how much you sacrifice for Allah is more important. Hope that answers the question. Up in a cell away from his family Is there a father in this world who would not defend Justice and rights till the very end Where are your jobs, baby? Security.